Hi, I'm Robin Stevens, author of The Murdermost and Ladylike Mysteries. I love mystery stories. They are so exciting, they feel like puzzles to solve, and they're even more exciting to write. Writing a mystery is all about creating a really good plan. And once you have a plan with all the ingredients you need, the story will really start to flow. Now, there are six ingredients you need for any mystery story, and they are, first, you need a setting. Then you need a victim and a crime. You need some suspects, they need to have clues, and the whole thing needs to be finished off with a really good resolution. The first thing we need to think about when we're telling our mystery story is the setting. Now, this can't just be anywhere. This needs to be somewhere that I call a closed setting, a place that's very hard to get into and out of, and has people in it already who know each other very well. Some good examples of this closed setting could be a train or a theater, or like my first novel, Murder Most and Ladylike, we could have the crime take place in a school. For the story we're creating today, I've decided to choose a school gym. It's a place people know very well, and it's a place where definitely crimes could happen. Now we've chosen a setting, we need to think about the crime and the victim, and this is really the heart of the story. What do we want to have happen in our mystery? Is it going to be a theft, a murder, a kidnapping? Today I've decided to go with a theft. And once I've chosen that, I have to work out who this theft is going to happen to. Because we're in a school gym, I think it's pretty obvious that a great victim would be the school's PE teacher. And because I've chosen a PE teacher, again, I think it's pretty obvious that the thing that has stolen from them should be their most prized possession, their medal. Now it's time to think about the clues and the suspects. Who might be around the crime scene and what objects might we find that could lead to them? Perhaps we find a lipstick which matches the shade worn by the school's science teacher who needs money. Could the science teacher have stolen the medal to melt it down for cash? Perhaps you'll find a ring of the sort worn by the school's receptionist, somebody who is secretly in love with the PE teacher and just wants them to notice her. Or maybe you'll find a glove of the sort worn by the school's head teacher, somebody who hates the PE teacher and wants to get them to leave the school. Or you might find a pen of the sort used by the school's English teacher, somebody who hates the PE teacher and wants to take their job. You can find so many things just lying around anywhere you are and you can use any of those things to spark off a story idea and think about who might be in a location and why. And now for the final piece of the puzzle, the resolution. You've had the suspects, you've had the clues, but now you need to make sure that your story is full of twists and turns to shock and confuse your readers. You need to make sure that the person who really committed the crime is the most unlikely suspect. And there are plenty of really great possibilities. What if the receptionist framed the science teacher by leaving her lipstick at the scene of the crime? Or what if the English teacher and the science teacher were working together to steal the medal? Or what if the PE teacher themselves was the person who took the medal to get sympathy from the rest of the school? Whatever you choose, make sure that all of the suspects, apart from the criminal or criminals, have an alibi, a story that means they didn't commit the crime, so your reader knows that the person who committed the crime is the real culprit. And that's it. That's all you need to create a brilliant mystery story. Anyone can do it. It is a lot of fun. And all you need to remember are those six ingredients. 